So if you're going to do mm -hmm. consulting, you got to make sure you're charging enough to make it worth your time because time is, is definitely money. What's going on, Crypto Jump Starters? So look, we got the whole Crypto Jump Start team. Well, not the whole Crypto Jump Start, but we got a few of the guys. We got Daniel. He's back from his trip in Japan. We got William, the man in charge of the Spanish channel, which you can sit, check out. Link is in the description. Today, we're going to do something a little different because of something that we launched. Today, we're going to do a mastermind group between the three of us. So mastermind groups are probably one of the most amazing thing that you can be involved in if you are a motivated uh, professional trying to basically further yourself in whatever it is. In our case, crypto, starting a crypto project, crypto research, growing your portfolio, all that kind of stuff in crypto, we work in many different aspects. And what we've done is we've started a mastermind group that uh, people can become a part of. If you wanna find out more details, cryptojumpstart.com. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to kind of run through kind of a, a mastermind, which we, we do on our own. But what we're going to do is really organize this and give you guys a sneak peek of kind of how a crypto mastermind group might work. Um, inside our mastermind group, there might be a lot more people in one. Um, typically, how, how it runs is we'll do a presentation and then we'll have hot seat. So there might be selected few people in a hot seat. In this case, there's three of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically kind of get started. Then each one of us is going to go in the hot seat. While we're in the hot seat, we have five minutes to basically explain where we are and some of the hurdles and things that we're trying to get to and goals and maybe where we're having problems. The other guys are going to have like three to five minutes to give their opinion on maybe help overcoming some of these things so that we can constantly move forward. So a mastermind group is basically like-minded individuals that are all trying to achieve a similar direction goal in, in an industry or in our case in the crypto space all of us all three of us are crypto youtubers now we have crypto reds daniel over there you can check out his spanish channel we got crypto jumpstart spanish and then we have crypto jumpstart here so the way it's going to go is we're all going to do a quick introduction about what we've been up to then one at a time each one of us is going to go in the hot seat uh, we get five minutes to kind of say what we want to say, and then we'll do a closing at the end. So let's uh, start it off with, uh, I'll go last. So Daniel, um, just get, you know, in the next like three to five minutes, just, you know, give us your thoughts on the crypto space right now and what, what you've been doing and kind of your focus and all that. So, yeah, like you said, uh, it's been like, two three weeks since you know i got i got kind of disconnected from the crypto space um you know taking advantage i guess quote unquote of the bear market so coming back what i'm struggling a little bit with you're not in is... the hot seat yet you're not in the hot seat yet oh this okay. is just uh, basically kind of going to let us know what what you've been up to kind of a thing and you know your thoughts about the crypto space um uh, trying to trying to find trying to find content i guess uh because um you know because it's the bear market and a lot of people me included of course are kind of reluctant to um invest obviously i'm still dcaing that's a really good you know that's what i've been kind of preaching since i started dcaing dollar cost average it's you know the best strategy um I believe that that is one of the, the like the main thing that you know people could do on the uh, crypto space right now because this bear market could uh, very well last you know a year two years who knows because it's kind of synced with like a global global recession although the Fed isn't really calling it a recession but you know that's a separate subject. Uh, the other thing is um, what I'm starting to notice that we can do uh, another video about is airdrops. So ZK Zinc is kind of like a, a layer two from Ethereum. They're kind of launching their mainnet. And apparently they're going to launch a token um, this, I think it's this month, like by the end of the month. So we just have a few days uh, or maybe in November, where if you buy their tokens on the test net, provide liquidity, you know, do all that stuff, you might get airdrop a token on the main net, which could be worth some money. 
So I'm trying to, you know, there's there's like some uh, things, I guess, you could do in the, you know, uh, crypto space right now that doesn't involve just going and flipping NFTs like it was yeah. a few months ago at its height. Aping in. Aping in is not a good strategy right now in the bear market. Yeah, yeah. definitely not. <laughs> okay, William, uh, remember, not not hot seat yet, just kind of uh, what's happening. Oh, hello, Crypto Junk Starters. Um um, yeah, I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, it caught my attention what Daniel was saying about this. You were talking about layer two project, Daniel? Yes. For, uh, for Ethereum. Uh, because right now what's trending are blockchains, new blockchains, man. Like people, everybody wants to develop the new big blockchain right now. And there's, uh, you know, as we were covering the other days, there is like four or five different uh, blockchain projects that I know about that are low market cap and other ones that I'm like doing some research on it that um, that's where I've been uh, putting my attention on because people is really grinding into developing real technologies now the bear market it's um, it's here because in the bull market we used to be able to you know just out of a good sales pitch, editing came moon, right? You know, people, you know, saying, oh, this is going to go up, this is going to go up. And just based on promises, you could make things go really high. But now projects have to be, you know, really, now they really have to be promising something big for the future and showing the community that they are developing. And one thing that I noticed, since there is no many new people in crypto right now, as it used to be, is that everybody that is in crypto right now, they know. So the projects aren't really trying to be like, oh, guys, let's go, you know, to the moon, let's go, everybody, and getting everybody high because everybody's sort of like, you know, uh, we know like how it is um, regarding th that type of behavior. And it's more like projects are now quiet and they go and they deliver and they quiet and then they go and they throw, you know, they deliver. And those are the ones that are doing good, the ones that, you know, actually go and show some results. So that's what I've been up to, like, you know, actually trying to uh, find how to uh, how to find one of those projects or, you know, actually already involved in some of those projects that I think uh, have a chance to be to be something good um, in the future. That's what I've been up to. OK. All right. My turn. Once again, just what we're up to, not the hot seat yet. Yeah, what I've been doing is, well, this video is kind of one of the things that I've been focusing on. And I know, William, you've been working with me, uh, putting together the mastermind group, which this is kind of, um, you know, one of our first mastermind groups just amongst us. Of course, we'll be doing it with lots of other people. Um, I'm also started an NFT project for Crypto Jumpstart. I'm working with an artist. Um, I already have pretty much seven designs. It's a pretty cool narrative. This will all be revealed later. Um, I'm in no rush, but it's not so much because I think I can create a, a, an NFT project that's going to make a ton of money. It's because I want to be able to do something that's, that's more based on the narrative, the art, and something that we can use within our community as something to be proud of uh, for Crypto Jumpstart. So I don't really care about trying to turn this into like some sort of a moneymaker. It's more of a something that I wanted to do for fun. And uh, I'm working with an artist uh, designing the stuff and designing the variables. And then later I'll work with you guys about kind of the utility that we think we can add to the community and how to make it fun and stick with the narrative. Um, and then on top of that, I work with two projects that are developing in the crypto space that, um, well, actually three projects one that hasn't even started yet and two that are in full fledged development, which I don't talk about uh, uh, openly on, on here, but in our private mastermind group or the mastermind group, if people decide to, you know, request to be joined and are accepted into our mastermind group, then I, I will, you know, I talk more about that kind of stuff. So, that, so my whole belief system right now is we're in the bear market. So pretend it's the bull market and do as much as you can in the bear market while nobody else is doing anything because that will pay off when you do come back into the bull market. But most people, including influencers, projects, they just go to sleep and they quit and they capitulate. And the guys that really grind harder in the bear market are the ones that win in the bull market, that really win. And I'm trying to stick with that philosophy. So that's what I've been up to. Um, all right, guys. So thanks for giving us a snapshot. So now we're going to do 
a hot seat. So how, how the hot seat works, and we'll go in the same rotation, we'll start with you, Daniel, and then William, is you want to kind of talk about some focal points. I mean, uh, there's a million things we could talk about, but yeah. try to pick one or two things specifically that you think you're having the hardest time overcoming, or you don't seem to be able to find a solution for. It's like a sticking point in on where you're trying to go right now with what you're doing in crypto. Just one or two key things. Um, try to try to give give us you know give it to us in like three to five minutes, and then one at a time, we basically give our opinion. So the focal point is on you, Daniel. So next three to five minutes, you're in the hot seat. I think that uh, one of the um, key things that I'm struggling with now is um, getting getting a business model that really is um, sustainable even with the bear market. So like on the bull market, like everybody turns a profit, like William was saying, like every sales pitch is accepted and launch prices, you know, go go to the moon. Now, I believe that as a YouTuber, you can create several sources of income. And obviously some of it is ad revenue, which is fine, but some of it is um, sponsor videos. And I have, uh, I, I actually have had um, very few sponsors, but uh, so the ones that I take are actually projects that I think this is actually like a really good service. Uh, examples of that are local exchanges. So because I'm based out of Costa Rica, um, I get, um, well, just because of my numbers on TikTok, not so much on YouTube, but on TikTok, I get lots of uh, people that um, what, that want to have uh, sponsored content. And the problem with that is that a lot of them are just exchanges that you've never heard of. And they just offer like derivative products and like perpetual contracts and advanced trading stuff that I don't really focus on and that people are probably just going to lose money on, especially my viewers. So those I actually never. Yeah. You uh, don't want to, yeah, yeah. You don't want to shill something that you don't know anything about that you don't really like or do, or like you said, it's not part of your, your MO. Exactly. Yeah. But the ones that I have actually promoted are local exchanges. And some of them are actually, you know, still around and they offer uh, a good service. Some of them uh, actually just uh, went out of business. And, uh, you know, obviously that got a lot of people angry. Like there's one in particular about uh, this um, uh, mining company, which is actually based here in Costa Rica. I, I actually um, you know, use the products and it's like, yeah, I mean, like, it's nothing outrageous that I'm, th that I'm thinking like this guy's going to exit scam, you know, it's truly something that I actually used and thought it was going to be something, um, really good. Problem is that COVID hit and then, uh, war with Russia and basically his whole business model came to crashing and some people actually lost money. So it's um, obviously something that, you know, I kind of feel for because it's my audience. So what I'm trying to focus on right now is uh, not do so much sponsored content, but actually uh, make, offer, offer some sort of services um, to my audience that uh, I can really help them. And it's not based on a third party because like, because of the industry, they can just go plopping. And, and even though I actually did nothing wrong, people still got hurt because of something that I you know, said. So mm -hmm. that is something that if I do like a one-to-one -one consulting service is something that I can control way better because I control more than narrative. And it's not something that you know, people can get exit scammed on. So yeah, the problem, like, I guess like mainly uh, or uh, the problem that I have in right now is trying to come up with a, uh, like a good process, I guess, so to speak, like a good offer so that I can get uh, on it and um, try to get away some of that uh, fear of selling, which I'm actually not really good at selling. I'm really good at explaining stuff, understanding like complex stuff and then breaking them down into pieces that probably people can understand. So I like creating content, but um, I'm, I'm still having like this thing about not being good on selling. So okay, that's cool. I mean, problem. Yeah. The, oh, you're done. I was going to say 30 more seconds. All right. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'll go first 
and I'll try to give you my three to five minutes kind of opinion. Um, so basically, we've identified two things that you're really trying to kind of get past. And one is to come up with uh, something that you can sell in the bear market, bull market, uh, like a like a product that you can sell that you have confidence in that nobody can take away from you. Like affiliate marketing, they can go out of business, they can take it away, or they can just not pay you. Ad revenue, they can change the algorithm on you, and all of a sudden you make no money. Um, sponsored ads, you're at the, you know, they come when the market's good, and then they disappear when the market's bad. So basically something that represents you that's digitally, like whether it's consulting. So the thing about consulting is you have to trade time for money. So if you're going to do mm -hmm. consulting, you got to make sure you're charging enough to make it worth your time because time is, is definitely money. So if you're charging a hundred dollars an hour, that's probably not really worth it. Right. For the type of knowledge that you actually have. Um, the other option is to create a digital product that you can sell. But the problem there is if you've never, well, I know you've done it before, but the problem there is what do you create and how, how much time and effort do you want to put into something and will it expire? Meaning like you could create something now, but then a year down the road, it's going to maybe become irrelevant. So you have to have something that you can sell that's scalable, that's also um, timeless, you know? but it doesn't necessarily require you to trade your time for money. And then you need a way to sell it. Okay. So we're kind of cheating on this a little bit. And, and I'll, in one more minute is we are starting a mastermind group for everybody. And one of the things that I've identified amongst us is Daniel, you're really good at explaining things and creating content. So we need that in the mastermind group. And it makes sense that you focus on that. William, He's been in sales. He's gone from an engineer to sales. He has no fear of selling. And me, as you guys know, my, create, my creativity has no bounds. I come up with new stuff every day that I have to kind of rein in and be like, all right, that's too much. Point I'm getting at is if that's kind of the problem is you want to learn to be good at what you're, you're, you're not very good at. But you can be a part of a team where you don't have to do what you don't want to do. We can let William take on a little bit more of the sales role. You can take on what you're good at, which is creating content and explaining things. And I can take on the role of being more creative and basically figuring out how to solve problems and creative thinking outside the box because I like to do that. I'm not as good at creating tutorials and explaining things as you are. And I'm with you on the sales thing. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of selling things um, but I want to learn. So we got to get good at what we're not good at, but we need to focus and figure out how to monetize what we're already good at. Cause we don't, we don't want to develop something that's going to take six months. So that's my, my opinion on kind of where to put your focus. Your turn, William. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, uh, you know, Daniel, I think, you know, I just want to reinforce that, yeah, you are really good at explaining and breaking down things into pieces and then, you know, being able to teach to people. Um, uh, my piece of advice is that you're always selling, man, whether you want to sell or not, every transaction that you do with people, you know, every conversation that you have with anyone, you're actually selling yourself in a way. So whether you decide to do that good or bad is your decision man you know whether you decide to be a good seller or a bad seller in that in that sense it is um it, it is more of your decision right uh because you because you are as i said you are selling yourself anyway man you know you you are giving you are in front of people getting um the whoever you're having a conversation with is getting an idea from you and that's you know whether they're gonna purchase or not your services is gonna come from that you know, from that relation of that conversations that you guys um, are having at that specific moment for whatever reason it is. So, um, you know, I think there are things that you can do in order to not be so much uh, afraid about um, uh, about selling. And it's, you know, the, the main thing, I think it's understanding that what you know and the knowledge that comes with you, man, is worth the value for people, man. It really is, man. So you are worth it and you... And therefore, you are worth to sell the services that you offer. 
uh, that's for me, you know, regarding the part. And then you know, people is living their own lives, man. You know, sometimes you're going to be grown, bro. Sometimes you're going to, you know, promote uh, things that are like, you know, uh, no good for others. It is not your fault, man. Like, you know, all influencers do that, man. Every single influencer does it. And it's, you know, you cannot control what other people, you know, you cannot be controlling other people's businesses, man. You cannot be controlling if people go out of business or not, or if, you know, they ended up being a, a, a good or no promotion. Um, well, that, that is not your fault. And you should always advise your audience that they have to do their own research. You know, as we say, you know, this is no financial advice. So you should always have this kind of disclosure on the messages that you do. Because when money is flowing your way, man, you know, I don't think that you should take things that are, you know, considered bad. You know, you have to always be considering that you're not accepting anything that is bad. But you shouldn't be rejecting that much because that is income that is flowing your way. That is money that is coming your way. So the way you approach it, the way you present it to your public and the way you get this business around, I think it's important for you to continue to have a, most, a more stable business model, man. Uh, that is my piece of advice for now, man. Awesome. Cool, thanks. Okay, so what we'll do after um, we, we hot seat ourselves is uh, everybody, uh, uh, what I want everybody to do is to give two actionable things that you're going to try to achieve before our next our next meeting so what are you going to do you know to to move this forward all right william you're in the hot seat and i'll go last okay good um let's see as you say many things that we can we can bring up but um i'm gonna try to focus on 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 the most important one, as, as you guys know, we started the, the YouTube Spanish uh, channel uh, about a month, I think a week ago, maybe a month and two weeks, the most. And, um, you know, even though I have been consistent of uh, delivering, um, delivering content, I'm trying to find, you know, that balance because, what I, well, I want to say that I'm trying to include now storytelling into the videos that I gonna continue to do so because I wanna connect more with people, and 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 the problem that I'm in running into right now is how to be able to deliver you know three or four videos per week, and always have a storytelling uh, within that content that will help me to connect with people and not run out of the storytelling part, you know, because it's easier to just go and get the facts from a project and be like you know this project has this has that. And, you know, they're trying to do this and they're trying to do them and just be very systematic and have a system around it. That is that is very easy, but I'm trying to connect more with people and I want to find a balance on that and be able to have uh, connect more with the audience, I guess, is what I'm trying to do. Okay. All right. So we're identified two things. Uh, William started a YouTube channel. Well, he's Crypto Jumpstart Spanish. Um, but it's only been a month and a week. So two things I identify. One is you want to be able to, I think, be patient, right? So don't expect results so quickly because it is so young and it takes time to really build something. So remind yourself of that, that you know your style and your method is going to only improve the more videos you make. So don't beat yourself up if you feel like you're not putting out the perfect video. You don't need to put out the perfect video and you don't need to tell everybody everything in one video. You can, you can tell them part and there's always more videos. Remember that. So you don't have to, you're not under this pressure to make every video perfect. That's one of the pitfalls that people mm -hmm. fall into is they feel like they have to cram in all the information to this one topic or whatever, when all you really need to do is hold people's attention and be, and improve every week, every month, every day. Um, the second thing is storytelling. So now that you understand how important it is to do storytelling, it's in your brain already. You've, you've subconsciously made it important. So storytelling isn't always about the past. It can be about what happened today, or it can even be about just some idea you have in the future. So storytelling, it, it comes in many different forms. So when you think storytelling, a lot of people think, I have to have all these stories from my past history. No, storytelling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So storytelling isn't, it, it isn't just that. It's like, oh no, I've run out of, I've already talked about everything you know, that I can think of. Storytelling is really just 
telling people things from your personal experience, your filter, and then it's coming out through your filter as opposed to basically treating something like an encyclopedia. I learned this fact, this information. Now I'm going to tell you the exact same information. You just filter it through you and then it becomes storytelling by default, as long as you remember to do that. Um, are you taking notes? <laughs> no, yes, because you, no, and I'm taking notes on this filtering through you, man, because, you know, sometimes I like when people give me, you know, a lesson on something that just a few words means a lot, you know, like the word never give up. I learned it from a professor and that's really important. And filtering information is the second time I hear that in the last week. So I'm taking that as a sign, man. You know, you filter yeah. information through you. And it Authenticity. It, it's uh, that's what authenticity is, is when it comes through your filter of your opinions, your experiences, and then you basically, basically filter it into who you are, even if you're repeating things over and over. And then anytime you can relate it to something you did today or the past or a story that you even heard about, remember, storytelling isn't always about you. It's about stuff that you heard or you witnessed. So once you kind of start to broaden all that storytelling becomes easier and easier. And it's like anything, the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at it. All right. So that's, that's what I got for you for now, Daniel, you're up. Thank you. I think that storytelling can be, uh, doesn't need to be really elaborate. And especially when starting, I think it can have um, just a few components. So for instance, I don't know why I thought about Solana, right? So Solana is one of those like Ethereum killers, but one of the things that I guess kind of stuck with me about Solana is that it was born in California. Why? Because Solana is like an actual place in California, like where, oh. where it's a beach. Um, so that, that, that to me is part of like storytelling. It's like, hey, well, like Solana, whatever. Like, but, you know, because of the, what I was presented Solana as, it's like, well, Solana started with this guy. I don't remember his name, but he started in California because he really liked this beach and he named his blockchain Solana. And just like that, I mean, that's a little bit part of like the storytelling and it can actually help, you know, you recognize it's like, uh, oh, why is Solana uh, like the main chain for USDC, right? Well, because Circle is also an American company, you know, and then uh, because of like certain things that have happened uh, when it gets political, I always, I always remember, oh, Solana is part of like this story about the United States uh, corporate blockchain, whatever. But so that to me is part of, is part of a story. So it could be just like little things, like you just said, like Solana is actually, you know, the name is based of a, like an actual place, like a beach in California. Just like that is like a little bit of storytelling for Solana particularly. So it could be just like small things and you'd have to make like a big story or, um, you know, um, uh, like connections or um, metaphors out of it. It doesn't it, have to be stories about my past. That's what you're trying to say, right? Right. Could just be, yeah. you know, a fact that, you know, maybe stuck in your head. Or I'll give you one more piece that just popped in my head. Right. And I learned this when I was learning about memory. There's a book called Memory Power. And the way you memorize things is through um, not rote memory, which is repeating things over and over. But you remember you remember things by basically telling stories uh, about things. You know, you create you create a picture in your mind. And they said there's three things that you can do in storytelling to uh, you know create a good story, and uh, and it, it makes it more memorable because that's what you want is you want to tell stories that people are going to remember, and then tell their friend, oh yeah, this guy was talking about this. And so one thing is the more ridiculous it is the 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 more the easier it is to remember in somebody's head so if you picture something absolutely ridiculous you know like bizarre and ridiculous you're going to memorize that the second thing is is when you make something really 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 big in the mind in the picture or you make something really 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 small and if you incorporate that into your storytelling it's going to make it easier for you to remember as well as people to remember. I mean, think about it. We always remember stories that are funny because they're ridiculous or they're like bizarre, or unbelievable. So you can kind of add that to a story in the way you tell a story to make it more entertaining and believable and people can remember. So anyways, that's the last thing I wanted to haul. You can, you can remember that. Be ridiculous. Make things bigger than they were, make things smaller than they were. So they're not just average, you know? 
Like it. Um, okay, my turn. Hot seat. Um, so, hot seat. Biggest problem that I'm having right now is, as I said, I have a lot of things that I'm working on. I have a team now that's on our YouTube channel. So we have uh, four people behind the scenes that are editing videos, doing the social media, this and that. We have people on project number one, um, quite a big team. And we have uh, a, a smaller team on project number two. Like I said, I'm not saying it. The problem that I, I come across is I constantly feel like when it comes to marketing and social media and being creative and fixing problems, they all turn to me and, and things that seem so obvious to me, I feel frustrated sometimes that like, I have to approve everything. They have, to, I have to tell them everything. And I'm trying to move away from that so that these teams, in a sense, I want to clone myself. So I don't have to be the guy constantly saying no you should do this or there's a better way to do this or why don't you do this or are them constantly feeling like they want to ask me for approval because they think that i'm gonna you know yeah i, I want to get away from that whole micromanaging but also not feeling frustrated that they're going to do as good of a job and not feeling like ah i should just do it myself because nobody's going to do it as well as i can you can't scale and you can't grow and improve as a project and that's one of the things that i'm dealing with right now is bouncing back and forth to all these things. And I'm trying to figure out how to make my guys better and more efficient without everything having to come through me. There you have it. <laughs> well, your project manager, like is the one person that you need to get all, that needs to be approving all of that stuff. Right. And everything has to be getting funneled through him. Mm -hmm. So why not instead of like, um, looking at every single uh, like let's say scenario or every single derivable that they're coming with to you in a separate manner why don't you coach him on like more of your way of thinking and the way that you want things why don't you have like uh, maybe a, a every week having a session with this person like spending half an hour with him mm -hmm. on a call you know just reviewing everything having teach teach him the way that you know things and that you like uh more of things to be delivered to you i'm not sure if you're doing that at this moment i'm beginning but I'm getting to yeah i'm starting okay. more and more of that like i've basically said look if i don't answer in 12 hours you just make the decision don't wait for me to answer because sometimes i won't answer or i have too many things going on and so i'm doing things like that and i'm saying you do your best judgment i trust you so that's one of the things that i've started to do more often yeah with with the project manager and they're doing that same with the YouTube. They they like want me to approve every single video. And I'm like, I know it's good. Just, you know, I filmed it. I know that the editing is not going to change it that much. Just put it up, you know? And if it's, if it's bad. So that's one of the things I'm working on, but go ahead, continue. No, no. And as you say, if it's bad, it's not, you know, the world is going to, it's not going to fall apart from it because one video is bad. So maybe mm -hmm. you can do quite, you know, Q and A instead of like approving everything. Maybe you can come and, you know, watch the videos later on and see, oh, guys, you know, on this video that you published, this should have not been like that or mm -hmm. done in that way or and, and not to do it in all the videos because if not, you're going to mm -hmm. spend exactly the same time, right? Uh, more of a Q&A and more mm -hmm. of a coaching approach in my, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I know you said that you're already doing that, but probably, you know, having this person that is the project manager feel like he's got more and more of, uh, of your trust, right? You're trusting him. Mm -hmm. So that he feels empowered of making these decisions and that he needs to understand that you are, let's say, I don't want to, I don't know if there's a better word than this, but you are, you know, strict or picky or you, you want things to be done pretty well done. So like he cannot just be approving everything as it comes. He should, you know, revise the things, review the things and perhaps, you know, do a few changes before he approves it. So he already knows that he do his best in order to, you know, get things done the, the, um, done the way uh, that they were that they the way they were supposed to do yeah. try that for a few months or something like that if he, yeah. if it doesn't work then we have to mm -hmm. maybe take over uh more uh um, it gives me some ideas what you said yeah i i you just gave me you actually gave me some ideas on the, on the very first thing you said which is right. try to teach them to think more the way i think mm -hmm. 
coach them that way that's, instead of that's... instead of instead of criticizing everything. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. I'll definitely work on that. I think that it depends on the, I guess, like the task at hand. So for instance, if it's something repeatable that, um, that I guess can be, I get, we, we were discussing, uh, another day that there are certain people that are really good, uh, that are very well, um, task oriented. So it's yeah. like very mechanical, like, you know, this is a script, you follow it. And they're the happiest people alive. There are some other people, type of people that are just really creative. And it's like they feel constrained by having this script and these mm. rules. And those are the people that want to color outside of the lines because it helps their creative mind. Um, and if it if if it's something that obviously there's a spectrum, right? There's, you know, there, there, there are tasks, especially on tasks that... Uh, some tasks, uh, they don't require um, like a lot of creativity. There's a little bit into it that that could actually be helpful for them to kind of, you know, think like you. If it's something more of more on the side of the creative side that needs to be done like quite a lot and it's something that you want to step away from so that it becomes scalable and you move out of your own way, that in that part is actually harder. And I think that it may... Uh, be helpful to think about um, probably, you know, hiring somebody or getting somebody who is naturally that creative, but that just depends on how many of the tasks need to be more on the creative side of the spectrum and the other one um, are on the task oriented side of the spectrum that can be coached by just like, hey, this is the way I think. Uh, some of the things I actually do with like my editor. So my editor is in charge of putting memes I have, I, before him, I had a large list of memes um, and that I put, but, um, you know, I kind of wanted to get the video editing out of the side and just like shoot the video. And uh, he, he does a pretty good job. Uh, some of the memes I actually are not of my liking um, or can be better, you know? So it's like, I would say, hey, like, look at, follow this guy. This guy puts a lot of memes that I actually like. So you just download it and try to, you know, piece it together so that it, it becomes more my style. But that just model. depends on the like, type of yeah, task. Model, yeah, model after. So what it sounds like, kind of what you're saying, what I'm, I'm getting is maybe spend more time making sure the right people are in the right jobs, which I haven't really thought a lot about because the team for Project A is growing. And there's a lot of people working in, say, we'll just say it's social media, community, that kind of a thing. And I haven't really asked my project manager, like, if you were to separate them, who's more creative and who's better at, at just basically getting tasks done, let's make sure they're doing what's better for them. And then if I know who's more creative, because I'm more creative, I know who to speak to. And if I need tasks done, then I know who to go. So it's really just more about, it's about refining is what I'm getting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and I have a whole bunch of other things that I could have said, but that's what's great about a mastermind group is you focus on Chris, one thing. You, you know what? I can add, I can add something else if we still have sure. time, just a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, you know, I like this. Uh, there's a coaching method that, that I like in which, you know, you have a goal and, you know, before the goal, you have a process that have to be executed in order to achieve the goal. But even before the process, you have a, a character that needs to have a set of skills. So, you know, as Daniel says, once you know what, you know, what position or what, um, yeah, what position someone needs to have you, better, it's probably a good idea to write down a set of, my computer is going to turn off. One second. I have to connect the battery. <laughs> That's actually funny because I actually have a hard stop because uh, I have another meeting. So I'll just take advantage and just drop out, but... Yeah. Right before you drop out, two actionable yeah. things that you're going to focus on before next call. Oh, hmm. Two actionable things. So the first one is um, I am going to uh, make a TikTok video and launch an offer on my services this uh, this week. Uh, for awesome. Probably like Excellent. you know Friday the latest uh, because otherwise mm -hmm. it'd be something. Yeah, um, and then mm -hmm. the and then the other thing is. Uh, I'm going to 
coach more some of the other uh like uh, one of the guys is helping me out with the script because um that's part of his job just like you know investigate some projects and give me like a like a script and uh, there are certain points that he's not really you know following on this task thing um and that'll help me get more time so yeah two things okay we'll check back in another mastermind group which won't necessarily be public for the youtube channel but this is for you guys to see our methods um william oh you can finish what you were saying okay daniel go ahead get to what you had to get to thanks guys Appreciate we'll talk it. soon talk soon all right daniel see you no i was just gonna finish that maybe you know writing down the set of skills that you know a person or a character that is in that position needs to have and making you know having check marks, you say, you know, your program managers have this, have this, have that. So, you know, specifically what you need to work on will give you, will help you do just exactly what we were saying, but have a, a little bit more organized and more focused and in, in what specific areas that, you know, if the person is already, you know, detail oriented. So, you know, you don't have, to, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. no details. It's more of a creative, it's more of a logic wise. And that, you know, specifically what to, what to coach on can just help you get a more, uh, yeah, a better scenario of where to improve. Okay. But I think you're doing good, man. All right. So your two actionable items for the, this week that you're going to be uh -huh. focusing on or make sure you try to get done before the next call? Well, include stories that are, um, well, regarding, specifically regarding what we were told. So I want to include stories that are not necessarily, you know, about me going and finding out anything. So I want to understand stories behind um, the projects or things that I'm talking about that are, you know, um, no, no, not just the facts on the story or on, on the project, but, you know, so that can help me um, be more oriented towards the storytelling, I think. So I'm going to mm -hmm. try that. I think that was a, a good idea. Okay. And, and the other thing is that I have to, I'm going to remind myself every time that I'm going to make a video that I'm like filtering information through me and that it's, you know, it's while well, just understanding that that's, that's the way um, it should be done. And, and that's the way that it's going to come out, you know, as authentic, a, a new type of information, a new type of content, and it's going to have e its unique signature uh, and just be confident that information that gets uh, found through me uh, will be something that, that people will continue to like. Okay. So when we say uh, actionable things, like we, we try to um, put like a substance on it. It's like, say like, I'm going to record three videos in the next week and I'm going to apply these things. So okay. it's not, we don't want to just say, I'm going to work at doing this. It's like, okay, yes. for the next week, this is what I'm going to accomplish. So it, it holds us all more accountable. So I, I agree right, with my, you. It's, it's, yeah. So uh, I'm going to leave it in three videos, you know, and I'm going to apply that okay. storytelling on okay. three videos. Perfect. And of course, that's a, that's a minimum, right? We say, I'm going to do mm -hmm. at least, or I'm going to do three videos, but if you do more, great. Yeah. Um, but okay. as long as we, we, we give ourselves a goal that, you know, you can say, yeah, that is a specific goal that I can achieve or at least try to achieve. Um, and I'm going to do that. You uh, 100% me, right. It's, it's called yeah. a smart goal. A smart goal. Yeah. A smart, a smart, a smart goal, goal is yeah. a specific uh, measurable, exactly. uh, achievable, uh, results oriented and, and time, time frame it. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Like you can't goal. just go, yeah, well, I'm going to try and eat healthier this week. It's like, how are yeah. you going to try and eat? What are you going to do exactly? All right. I'm going to intermittent fast, stop eating at seven 30 and, and then beginning at 10 30 for this whole entire week. Plus I'm going to cut out, uh, you know, gluten period. Right. Those are very, like you said, those are, uh, you know, Perfect. specific goals. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a half an hour session with my project manager, and I'm going to basically do a half an hour session where I focus on trying to coach him to understand the way I think so that he can think that way. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have him create a list of all the people that he's in charge of, and I want him to categorize them in either more creative, more task orientated, uh, and maybe another one or two categories that I can think of so that I can understand our people a little bit better and not just think of them as just workers. Everybody. Exactly. Everybody. So I think that's yeah. really good for me to think of it that way. Cause then 
then I know who to really, instead of say, have somebody do this, I can be like, have, what's her name, do this. So that's what I'm going to do, which is refining and organizing. And uh, yeah, that's my two actionable things. All right, guys. So that's a mastermind group. We did it pretty quickly because we wanted to show you guys. And it's really amazing because when you do something like this, you don't really know what's going to come out of you or out of other people. And you really learn. And when you're in the hot seat, you shut up and you listen and let people tell you because that's what the hot seat is all about. And don't go, yeah, but yeah, but, but yeah, I do that. You know, like listen, absorb it. And when you're with the group of people, like-minded people that are all trying to improve, they're going to help you solve your problems because everybody has skills that are different. So why would you want to be a part of a mastermind group? Well, pretty much if you're trying to improve your income, you're trying to become happier in your profession, you're trying to set goals, you just want to, you just want to feel more fulfilled. A mastermind group can help you with all these. In the crypto space, that can be starting your own project, um, making, you know, figuring out how to make more money and become worth figuring out how to maybe take what you already know and apply it to crypto, build a better, more a, a portfolio that that is better, that's smarter, that can get you to your goals um, and just bounce ideas off people that are going in the same way. It's so invaluable and so many people don't do it. And so many people that when they get in mastermind group are like, why didn't I do this earlier? Problem is getting into specific mastermind groups with people you connect with isn't always that easy. So if you guys want to learn more about mastermind groups and what we're going to be doing, you can uh, go to cryptojumpstart.com and uh, take a look at some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, you can join our free group where we're going to share some exclusive stuff. It's our Facebook group. You can find out through the link. And we're going to bring these kind of mastermind groups every once in a while here, but we won't share everything publicly. A lot of the stuff and a lot of the groups is going to be only within our um, mastermind group. I guess you could call it kind of like a membership. And uh, only if we get permission will we put it out like this. But uh, mastermind groups are amazing. Get Become a part of it. doesn't even have to be our group. You can go find one anywhere if you can find one. Just make sure that you get a good one with people that can add value to whatever it is that you're doing. And, uh, you know, what we're going to literally be doing is we're going to have like multiple groups inside of groups. So it's not just going to be one group. It's going to be, you know, groups and sometimes big groups with key people on hot seats that's the idea and the reason why we're doing this is because we want to do it for ourselves but we but it makes sense to open it up to people like-minded people so we can grow our network all that that's all i have to say for this video uh any last words william oh that was a fun uh hot seat session uh i i, I really think we all got something good out of it and if that's it yeah nothing to totally. for now well, yeah, we'll do another one. Maybe maybe once a month, we'll, we'll share one on here so people can kind of see some of the progress. But uh, that's it, guys. Uh, get yourself a mastermind group and watch your success, your earning, your focus, everything really improve. Um, until the next video. Crypto Learning crypto start. is a ton of fun. Learning crypto is a ton of fun. Mastering crypto is a ton of fun. All right, guys. Yep. <laughs> Catch you in the next video. Crypto Jumpstart. Thank you. Jumping out.